As in, what do you think makes a gifted student a gifted student? I think... Okay. A gifted... Well, see... I... That's probably the hardest question you'll ask me, is how to define giftedness. Well, it doesn't mean smart. It doesn't... It doesn't yeah, it's, it's, not it's, smart. It's, it's not smart. It means you... You know, and it, it, everyone, stuff. everyone is creative. Everyone is creative. Everyone is smart in a different way. Yeah. Bottom line is that we're focusing so much nationally on kids who don't achieve, uh, and we're putting a lot of efforts and money into helping them achieve. And there's nothing wrong with that, but we are doing it at the expense of someone. And those someones, if you will, are oftentimes really high ability kids who teachers just say, well, you know, they'll make it on their own, or they're smart kids, they don't need me as much as the other kids do. I've never believed that, and I never will. There is a spot, a time, I guess, when people look at others and say, well, they're so smart, why do they need anything more? If they're so smart, why can't they do thus and so? Um, there's a feeling that, I guess, in some human beings, that if you put somebody else down, you kind of raise yourself up. Um, which obviously is wrong. Sometimes I find it interesting. I even go into schools. I make a point of this. I'll walk another high school particularly and I can look at the trophy cases. And in a sense, the trophy case is almost an image of what's, what, what's honored. You'll see all the awards from the last 30, 40 years of every sports activity and you'll hardly ever see an award from a drama, a drama event or from a a war that the kids have won for some chemistry or debate or so on. So, yeah. I think society has a lot of problems, okay? Lots of problems. And I think they're, uh, what you see in some of the movies, what you see on television, what you see in around, isn't um, encouraging intellectualism. Supposedly, we have had energy sources better than what we have right now. They existed many years ago. Well, why haven't they come out? Okay, why aren't we doing that? Why aren't we better than we are? We did go to the moon, which was fantastic, in the 60s. What have we accomplished since that time that's really been important? I think the publicity that you receive, the things that are out there, that it's not, it's not important. I don't think people really think that being educated is that important because we don't advertise it as much. We don't explain how good these things are. Uh, that's probably the hardest question you'll ask me, is how to define giftedness. Because I don't see it, I can almost tell you more what it isn't than what it is. When they're young, they find you. They will ask you questions like, why doesn't snow melt white when chocolate melts brown and butter melts yellow? When you ask that when you're three years old, you don't need a whole lot of numbers to say you're gifted. You just need to have a good set of eyes and ears. It's their curiosity about the world going more deeply into thinking about why and causes, effects. Um, <clears throat> oftentimes the what ifs. Well, what if this didn't happen? Or what if this did happen? Or what if you could change something? Or what if you could do something? A child who demonstrates the ability to think and create and analyze and synthesize and be questioned and work, work through uh, problem-solving situations and does it at a level that's perhaps a little higher or more d deeper than somebody else does, we might be able to classify them perhaps as quote-unquote gifted. The gifted are not going to be teacher pleasers necessarily. They're not going to be the kids who are going to always be on time, turn in the best work. They're not going to um, always follow the rules. And they're not necessarily going to um, get all straight A's. 
it's not always the good smelling, well behaved kids who are gifted. Kids who are very empathetic because they see deeply into concerns, they feel deeply for others. It's almost as if sometimes they carry the burdens of the world on their shoulders. So I don't know how you define it. I can describe it like that better than I can define it. And I don't feel bad about that. I've been in the field for 30 years and for not being able to answer the most basic question of all, how do you define gifted? That used to kind of say, well, I have to make something up. I don't even apologize anymore because some things you can't define as well as you can describe. And there's many ways to describe giftedness because there are many ways to describe gifted people. I don't think, I don't consider myself gifted. <clears throat> Well, I, I don't, because I don't look at things that way, okay? I think I'm talented. I think I'm knowledgeable. I think I'm in bright in some things. But I don't look at things that way as if I'm quote unquote gifted. Well, I went to school in an era when there weren't, we, where I went, there weren't kids, there weren't call programs for gifted. And actually, I had trouble in school. I never could, under, could do my, I didn't like to do my homework. I wasn't a good student in math and science. Uh, didn't get great, good grades. So I was never labeled or even thought about as gifted. I, I had no idea that I was <clears throat> different in terms of the way I saw the world and the way I understood things uh, until I began uh, as a teaching. I didn't grow up in a culture where I was perceived as gifted or smart, uh, or intellectual? I, probably more as an adult than I did as a kid. And as a kid, I went to Catholic school for 12 years, and they don't do gifted in most Catholic schools, and they certainly didn't when I was in. But I was always the kid who was number one in the spelling bee, and the teacher would ask me to help kids who couldn't learn as well as I did. I remember in, in first grade teaching kids how to tell time, because I knew all the times, not just the hours and the half hours. And so I think from an early age, I knew that I had some talents about knowing stuff. And I also, because of some experience like that, realized I had a talent for teaching stuff. And so I, I never really put a label to gifted because I didn't know what the word was. But I was always the high achieving kid who teachers would say, you know, you're going to go far and stuff like that. But it was only when I really discovered the field of gifted as a graduate student that I think I would have applied that label toward me. And it seemed to fit. It was like a nice pair of expensive shoes. They fit just right. <clears throat> Do you believe that you are a gifted person? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I never think of giftedness in terms of myself. <laughs> I think of giftedness in terms of the students I've taught. So learning is always exciting. I can never imagine not learning something new or doing something exciting or being involved. Yeah, it was kind of like in kindergarten my parents knew and then like as it got on when I thought about it, we talked about it. So. I never knew that, it, like I never knew what pen was until um, I, I got a phone call and I was home with my, my, my mom and then she picked up the phone and then we, she, we, get, we went out to dinner. For some reason, I said, why are we going out for dinner? It's just a regular Monday. And she said, well, we'll tell you at when, when we're done dinner. And I'm like, okay. And I, so I never really knew that there was such thing as pen until I got into it. Um, I never knew I was, my parents always knew I was gifted. Just no one really saw it in me. Until, like, my uh, grandfather started giving giving me rocks, teach me about rocks, solar system, um, lots of crazy things like that. And I've just been happening since I was, it's just been happening since I was like four or five or something. Well, in first grade, I used to live in England, and I went to this one school, and in first grade, I was going to skip to second grade, but I chose not to, and then once we got here, this school, I finally found out about Penn, and then I got it. What happens to kids who were labeled gifted or not labeled gifted when they become grown-ups? I don't think we call adults gifted, because in the adult world, gifted 
means something different. We use gifted not necessarily as producers, although we hope they will be producers, but when they're in the school system, they're gifted in terms of potential and gifted of intellectual quotient instead of product. Because it sounds to some people as if it's elitist, and it's not. I don't think society likes being, people being called gifted. They might want to take the benefits of what these, those quote unquote gifted people can produce, but they don't want to be labeled because it's a leveling kind of situation. It makes us all similar. It's not right to be smart because then you're putting somebody else down. But in reality, there are very intelligent people who are brighter than a lot of other people. And it's how we perceive what they're going to be doing. That being gifted is easy. That it makes life easier and these kids are so lucky and what are they complaining about? <laughs> um, being gifted is actually harder. It's, it's a um, conglomeration of talents that are all competing for your attention. It's, as I've said before, it's the de depth of empathy, the feeling, the burden of the world on your shoulders. It's the um, understanding of the suffering of other people. Uh, I think giftedness brings lots of blessings, lots of abilities, but it makes everything more so. Um, just expressing your feelings and uh, creativity and knowledge to other people. You know. Yeah, you're kind of waiting. Like you're, I look forward every morning, yeah. Wednesday mornings to to go to, just to get out for, of school the time to go in just to just to have fun because it's like once a week so we're yeah. always like looking forward to it the, i think the best part is going to vary from person to person some people wouldn't even see it as a blessing they'd see it as something they wish they didn't have the folks who are intellectually lonely the ones who don't feel there's anyone out there who understands them or if they do they're so far away they just don't know how to stay in touch over time whatever those are the ones i feel uh, I don't want to give, say sympathy for it, but I, I really feel that they need a connection that they're not finding in their lives. Uh, so I think the best part about being gifted is having other people around you who are. So when you want to use words or talk about theories into the night or just slam a bad performance at a high intellectual level, you can do it with somebody who just doesn't say, you're weird, I didn't see that. And so the best part, I think, is finding other people like you with whom you can converse and just connect. One of the ways to challenge the gifted, and the parents tell me this over and over again, that when those kids are together, the kids and the parents see that as one of the havens almost, or one of the times that the kids talk about and, re and, and seem to respond the most to that time when they're together. Lots you do more stuff like, if you want a real class, you won't be able to play with blocks and Legos and all that stuff. Because it, that's regular school, but in Penn, you have to play with blocks, Legos, go on the computer and play Maya math games and all that stuff. It's school, but ten times is better. Normal class, it's daily, like math, spelling, but every pin year, it's something different. So you kind of look forward to it. So it's different things. Yeah, like it's, we like just it's kind of never fine. like I've been looking up for CPS since I, since I got in because my sister because I saw my sister she came back from that day at CPS and she was like oh that was the best day ever that was so fun so I was like oh I want to do that. Are they getting what they need? Is every child in school getting what they need? And if they're not, then there's something should be done. What makes you guys laugh in general? Like, what do you find funny? Uh, comedians. <laughs> Stand-up comedians? Um, like uh, Jay Leno. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Dan okay. Cook. Um, I forget the other guy's name, but he's really funny. Bob. Bobby. <laughs> no. uh, I like. Whoa. Well, and my um, friends. My friends. Like my friend Ethan. He's funny. Yeah. There's. I friends. 
that's what he said. Yeah. Um, movies, teachers, and I like laughing at books, but oh, yeah, wait. I like te like teachers make me laugh sometimes. Like they'll just like they'll stumble upon a word, or well, not that they would purposely do yeah. something, and mm -hmm. some people would wouldn't get it. Like, but yeah. we would get it, and we would start cracking up, and everybody would be like, "What's so funny?" Earlier, but we get the it from someone.